Hi, this is Alisa, and I have the seven principles of good practice here on the screen. And I'm curious to see how you are doing, if you are doing any of these seven principles in your teaching today with the help of technology. So give me a quick uh, shout out if you can. Uh, an example would be for number one, encourages contact between student and faculty. Well, with my students, I have them all blogging, and they are basically uh, giving me a heads up on what's going on in their process so far in the course, and then I respond back to them using um, the comment features on their blog. So we have a, a back and forth dialogue going on, and we have contact so I know what they're doing. So let me hear what you have to say. Well, Coop, um, I guess for whatever reason my camera's not working on the Mac. Um, you gave me a lot to think about here and some things probably to improve upon. So first, encourage contact between students and faculty. Um, I too, like the example you gave, give uh, require blogs, but another one I really like is I have my students do introductions with Animoto and um, that really gets people talking about making personal connections, which I think then facilitates stronger communication throughout the semester. Um, I also um, do grade books using Google Docs, shared spreadsheets, and every time I kind of update, do a massive grading spree and update the grade book, I tend to reshare the grade book um, so it sends them a link and then with the resharing I type a message. So I think that's a really good feedback mechanism for me and um, especially if I'm concerned about something and ask questions, a lot of times students reply to that email so it just gets us dialoguing. Um, I will, after this round of replies, I'll reply with um, uh, text and give you some links. Um, number two, develops reciprocity and cooperation among the students. Um, this semester in one class I required that students do an annotated bookmark list using Digo, and two things that they did really great. Uh, one, uh, we set up a Digo group, and they were sharing um, links with Digo group, and I, again, I'll give you that link. But two, the assignment specifically said how, when and where they could use the same links and not use the same links. So as a class, without me even saying it, they set up a Google Doc and were comparing the, the links they were using for what so they wouldn't overlap. So that was really um, great to see them doing that. Uh, number three, encourages active learning. Um, my favorite example for that is courses where we use wikis and have students uh, put annotated bibliographies in the wikis as a way to contribute open learning, open knowledge, open content um, back to the World Wide Web. I'll give a link to my um, American Lit, online early American Lit survey course. Number four, gives prompt feedback. I'll admit that, especially when I'm swamped, I'm not so good about that. I probably should set up auto-responses, I think, like you do with email. However, my concern about that is that um, I usually like to check the link or check the attachment to make sure I'm able to open the document or the link goes where they said it would go. Um, however, what I've found by making myself available in a bunch of places, chat, Facebook, Twitter, and, and sharing that with students and or colleagues, I'm getting contact there. It's like if they really want to find me, they know there's all these places and they're likely to get response. So that I find, and right now that's more with colleagues, but I think that's increasingly happening with students as well. Number five, emphasize time on task. I can't say I really do that, um, or not really with the technology. Um, time on task teams tends to happen more in a face-to-face -face class. Uh, number six, communicate high expectations. I guess in my mind it's just rubrics that I use them. However, I am going to share the link to Ruby Star as far as a technology, a website that um, a lot of times, especially when I have a new assignment and I don't quite know what I want that rubric to look like, I go to Ruby Star and try to find examples that help me start to, you know, think it through. Um, finally, respect diverse talents and ways of learning. Uh, this semester I've been really open about how students submit stuff to me. So. Um, for a couple classes, I'm getting um, alternate forms of submission through email, Google Docs, print. Um, and considering I have students that say things like, um, you know, I don't have print <laughs> printer ribbon, <laughs> can I please share this as a Google Doc? That's a really good thing. Uh, okay, I think that speaks to them all. Ah, okay, there's my countdown. Hey there. Um, I, uh, I will try to answer these for you here as uh, best I can, and I see the video is a little jumpy, but hey, new, new technology. Um, all right, encourages contact between students and faculty. Um, 
I actually have um, them on um, on email, but I also got everybody in class on Twitter, which I, uh, I've infused into that, um, into the classroom now for two semesters in a row. And so that's one way we try to keep up and share links and, and whatnot. Um, also, everybody got a WordPress blog, um, and so I'm trying to figure out how to better use that. I, I teach CIS 105, so we are somewhat limited in what all we can infuse because we have to do the whole Microsoft Office and so forth, and they've given us some new technology to uh, help test students, and so it doesn't always leave time to play around, which is very discouraging to me, but that's, um, that's my thing. Um, develops rep rep reciprocity and cooperation among students. Um, you know, I think what I've been wanting to do, and I didn't do it this semester, was in WebCT we can actually uh, create groups. And um, again, this is one of those where I wanted to divide up each class into a group, or at least my three classes that I teach, and have them each work on a segment and then maybe put stuff together. So um, I haven't I haven't quite, quite kind of gotten that. And maybe the more I'm reading this, maybe that's not the answer to this particular um, question, but um, just just trying to get uh, students on technology is kind of the challenge. It's it's one of those. It's one more thing for them to do. Um, first day of class, they sign up for like six or seven things, um, and then through the semester, we we use them. Um, Shelley mentioned Animoto. I always have them create an Animoto video somewhere towards the middle or the end. It's a nice break from things. We we uh, cover copyright, trademark, all of that. So. Uh, the videos they create are basically, um, you know, a nursery rhyme with, uh, with uh, you know, free use, um, free use music and free use uh, graphics, and they have to uh, create a two-minute animoto that, that basically tells the nursery rhyme or something, and with all the new tech stuff, it's exciting. Also, animoto gives you, uh, gives all my students a free six-month membership that lets them do pretty much anything that anybody else does in, in animoto. Uh, encourages active learning. Um, you know, I think that's part of, again, the, the, the technology and, and having um, access to the internet and having them search for new, new things. When we do PowerPoint, um, we search for, uh, you know, free use place to get graphics um, and so forth. So I think that one, that one is, is uh, something we all, we all try to do. Um, gives prompt feedback. I think this is this is the part where technology maybe bites us a little bit because of the fact that because of all of this is such an easy thing to do, it kind of falls on our shoulders now to say, hey, I need to grade this stuff. I always make fun of people. If you don't want to read the essays, then don't assign them. Um, well, that doesn't quite work, does it? So um, I know I don't do a great job on that. That's my that's one of the areas I need to improve on and giving giving people enough feedback. Um, and I think also that the the communicate. I think Shelley mentioned this that you know we're we're so available that it's almost like well why didn't you get back to me uh, like now um, and so you know we still have the I'll try to do my best in a 24 hour period especially if it's an online class um, people have an expectation that we're always online or that someone's always there. Uh, that isn't really really the case and there may be days when you're just simply you have a blackout you're going you know what I don't I don't do anything on Sundays or um, you know this weekend I'm gonna be gone so that all that all comes into into play um, the communications on high expectations I think that's that's kind of always always been there on you know we we expect our students or at least I expect my students to do their very best and and maybe to to exceed their their capabilities because that's that's what instills um, for future for future things um, those people that that know get the better jobs and get more noticed and um, employers aren't gonna you know I always tell my students saying hey, employers are gonna take you coming into the office at 815 and saying hey, I didn't get the thing done I need another hour um, you know if it's due for a eight o'clock meeting or nine o'clock meeting uh, there is no can I turn it in an hour later um, it's called the, you know, you're out the door because there's five other people who want your job. So um, I think the expectations are set. I think the fact that some of this stuff is uh, perhaps a little easy to, to get or that's the perception that we simply 
want more out of out of the things that are handed in. Um, you know, obviously the the no typos, no no misspellings, no things are now com you know kind of commonplace. Come on, run spell checker, run typo checker, whatever you want to call it. And let's see, respects diverse talents and ways of learning. Um, again, different people learn different ways. Um, I think we all know that. I think with with the vast amount of, of access now, I know places like Ning, and you know some of the some of the things where we can share content fairly easily. Um, Google Docs, something that I'm going to explore over the over the holidays and see how that that can come into play. Um, I think all of this is um, something that is both a benefit and perhaps even even you know a burden in the sense that we're now asking students to log on to five or six different places and explore these tools and use them and new tools are coming out tomorrow and we're going to be asking them to do that so hopefully this ramble will uh, answer some questions or at least some uh, my point of view on some of this and uh, good luck up there thanks see you soon oh by the way got my new GoDaddy look here all right bye Okay, there's a couple things that I like to do here. Um, one or two things that haven't been touched upon that I definitely think are important um, uh, in terms of technology and the principles below. Uh, one thing that we're trying to do is help encourage the students uh, to engage in active learning by understanding the audience. Right now we just finished up uh, an assignment where they had to review a restaurant or a place of business and they had to post the review in two different places. The review site and the review item, be it a meal or something like that, had to be identical. But because they were posting to different websites, it depends uh, who their audience is and what the nuances are of the rhetoric. So one website they had to use was Yelp.com, Y-E-L-P, and how they um, craft their argument would be different than, say, if they were posting the same thing to Fodor's or to Zagat. Another thing that uh, Shelley mentioned in her, her response was wikis and the idea of uh, communication and finding diverse talents and ways of learning between students. Uh, in the wikis, we have collective and collaborative intelligences where they enhance one another because one brain is not as effective or as strong as several and the students can bring together their diverse talents and their own personal experiences into the wiki to enhance the byproduct of that wiki. The other thing that I'd like to mention here is the contact between student and faculty. I'm setting up a Ning right now um, where we bring uh, different disciplines together. Students are taking similar classes, be it in history and in English and in a couple other disciplines. The same students who are taking classes in different disciplines are coming together in the Ning with their instructors for those classes to build a community within that and to begin to have the curriculum be more cross-cultural, cross-discipline, and it's more of a community where people take in different kinds of classes, um, but they all are in the same boat together where they're all taking these different classes, different disciplines, can all bring it together in a community where they can also, where they can also uh, communicate with their professors and have the professors shed different insights into things for them and help engage them and encourage active learning. And, and moreover, through the Ning, we also uh, have more prompt feedback and we develop more cooperation between the students as well as student faculty relationships. Hey Coop, it's Laura. Um, I'm going to comment on the gives prompt feedback um, 
because I don't think I have examples for all seven of them <laughs> or n any that I can think of right now off the top of my head. So for prompt feedback in my um, online English course, I try to have a two to three day turnaround for their paper, um, their long paper assignments. Um, I use the track changes feature in Word, so I give them feedback um, with comment bubbles and um, right on the, the paper. I also um, afterwards um, will create an avatar um, to post in the announcements area that um, gives summary feedback information for all of the papers and all of the assignments that have been submitted so they kind of get a tap into what everybody kind of did um, and how they did. So that's what I do for giving prompt feedback. Hi Elisa, this is Lisa. I, um, one of the things that I use is I give prompt feedback. Um, with assignments, I always provide immediate feedback to my students using um, Microsoft Word track changes and comments and then I speak to it using Jing. So I make a little video of the feedback. But I'm only giving feedback based on one student's assignments. So another thing that I do is I create an announcement that I post in my course management system that synthesizes all of the assignments so that the students can get a synthesis of the class as a whole. And I think that furthers the learning. And then I tie it into the next lesson so that I'm tying what they did to what they're going to learn next. Hope that helps. Have a great day.